Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue our read through of the Animal Atlas and tonight we're going to look at birds. So let's just dive right in to the bird facts. Let me carefully move my tea out of the way. There we go. My tea's still in the way but my teacup's empty anyway. Okay. Bird facts. Evolving from two-legged dinosaurs, the first birds took flight about 140 million years ago. Today, birds are found on every continent and in a diverse range of habitats, from grasslands to deserts. Many birds migrate incredibly long distances to breed or find food. So what is a bird? Let me move my empty teacup out of the way. There we go. What is a bird? Birds are vertebrates. Birds have thin and lightweight yet strong internal skeletons made of bone. They are warm blooded. From humid rainforests to chilly mountaintops, birds generate and maintain a stable body temperature. They lay eggs. Birds breed by laying hard eggs, which chicks crack open when ready to hatch. Most can fly using their wings. Most birds can take to the skies, however, some birds are flightless, and they are feathered. Feathers are important for retaining body heat and helping birds fly. So let's see the bird types. Estimated number of bird species is 11,500. That's a lot of birds. So of those, 6,200 are perching birds. Perching birds account for more than half of all bird species. Their feet have three unwebbed toes in the front and one strong flexible toe on the back, allowing them to perch on tree branches. Found globally, they include sparrows, lyrebirds, lyrebirds, I'm not sure, and birds of paradise. And the other 5,300 are non-perching birds, like Non-perching birds account for all other species. They include a wide range of birds located across the world, including parrots, owls, flamingos, and birds of prey, as well as flightless birds such as ostriches, emus, and penguins. Colombia has over 1,850 bird species, more than any other country in the world. Hibernating bird the common poor will, seen here on a roof, is the only bird species known to hibernate. Its diet of insects rapidly declines during winter, so it goes into a state of hibernation for weeks or even months. This bird is found in the grassy areas of North America. My accent slipped. Insects. I say insects. <laughs> insects. The longest migration. The Arctic tern. Arctic terns fly an amazing 59,650 miles, or 96,000 kilometers, from their breeding ground in the North Atlantic to Antarctica and back again. The biggest gathering. Flocks of more than 1.5 billion red-billed coleus have been witnessed flying over the African savanna. In such great numbers, this small bird is a constant threat to crop farmers. In fact, it is such a pest, it's often called the feathered locust. Let's look at some bill shapes. Over millions of years, birds have evolved many different bill shapes. Here are five of them, each designed to help the bird eat or catch its prey. Here is a seed eater. Birds such as crossbills have strong bills for eating seeds. The crossbill can extract seeds from pine cones with its overlapping bill. A water sifter. Flamingos have long, wide bills that they sweep from side to side in shallow waters, sifting out animals to eat. The nectar gatherer. The 
pointed bills are designed for precision. Some birds' bills also curve downward, which is ideal for extracting flower nectar. The mud probe. Birds with long, sensitive bills can explore soft mud in search of prey. The snipe looks for snails and small crustaceans. And the butchery tool. This hooked bill, as seen on a golden eagle, is perfect for stripping meat from the bones of fish, birds, and mammals. Or mammals. The largest flying bird is the wandering albatross with a wingspan of 12 feet, or 3.6 meters. And the average female arm is 5.2 feet, or 1.8 meters. It's gigantic. The biggest bird and the biggest eggs. The ostrich, a flightless bird from sub-Saharan Africa, is the world's tallest bird. It also bears the largest eggs, up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters long, nearly three times longer than a hen's egg. And the smallest bird, the bee hummingbird, is just 2.4 inches or 6 centimeters long. This tiny bird is native to Cuba. The fastest bird. Found throughout the world, peregrine falcons are formidable hunters. They swoop in on prey, such as other birds and bats, at record-breaking speed. They can swoop at 200 miles per hour, or 320 kilometers per hour. My goodness. The highest flying bird is the Rupul's vulture. It can reach an altitude of 37,000 feet or 11,280 meters, higher than the cruising altitude of an airplane. Now, Rupal's Vulture, what are you doing up there? That's way too high. There's the airplane at 35,000, and there's Rupal's Vulture. The biggest nest. Sociable weavers make and maintain nests that can house up to 500 birds. Oh my gosh. And a smart bird. Found in the remote Pacific Islands, after which it is named, the New Caledonian Crow can manipulate and use twigs to dig out prey, such as grubs, from trees. These intelligent forest-dwelling birds are the first to be observed making and using tools in this way. It's awesome. All right, let's look at some maps and see where some birds live. Our first bird is the good old ostrich. Let's see what it says bird that can fly, and roams where there is very little cover has to run fast to escape predators. The flightless ostrich does just that. As well as being the world's biggest bird, it is the fastest animal on two legs. There are two species and both live in open habitats in Africa. Let's look at the only one box, because there's a big box section over there. The Rift Valley. The two species of ostrich are separated by the Great Rift Valley. On the eastern side, the Somali ostrich has split away from common ostriches and evolved into a separate species. Let's look at its anatomy over here. I think there's only one little note and it's about its feet. Built to run. The long-legged ostrich is the only bird with just two toes. This reduces the area of each foot in contact with the ground, increasing speed. Awesome. Let's check out the map. It says, out in the open. Ostriches are at home on open countryside, from desert to savanna, where they live in groups and wander long distances in search of food and water. Food is scarce, so ostriches will eat whatever they can find. Roots, seeds, insects, and even small reptiles and mammals. Here's the common ostrich. Look at this. Some they live in just in the Sahel here. In northern Africa, the common ostrich lives mainly in the dry grassland Sahel region, but may wander right to the edge of the Sahara Desert. Male ostrich. Male common ostriches have black plumage with white wings and tall and tail and skin. I apologize. The females are brownish all over. Ostrich chicks, look how cute they are. Oh my gosh, ostrich chicks are super cute. All female ostriches in the group lay their eggs in a communal nest, so adults may end up 
guarding large crushes of chicks. Let's look at the Somali ostrich. You can see it just lives in this area in the Horn of Africa. Oh, my bad. The, the species lives in the Eastern Horn of Africa, in Somalia, Ethiopia, and Kenya. Males have a gray head, neck, legs, and feet, and a deeper black plumage than the common ostrich. Here in the Maasai region. In the Maasai region of East Africa, common ostriches have a reddish tinge to their neck, but are more closely related to the gray-necked ostriches further south. Let's check it out. Desert dweller. In the southwestern part of their range, common ostriches live in the hot, dry desert, in the Namib and the Kalahari Desert. Let's look at, oh, we have a little fact here. It says that male ostriches stand up to 9 feet tall, 2.7 meters. And at top speed, an ostrich can run about 43 miles per hour, or 70 kilometers per hour. That's faster than a racehorse. Interesting. Let's look at some other ostrich relatives over here. Let me carefully move my book all the way over my desk so you can see the other ostrich relatives. First, we have Reyes, living in this part of South America. Found on the South American pampas, Reyes resemble ostriches but are smaller, with three toed feet. Both sexes have brown plumage. The Dinamos. How cute is this bird? It's a big range here. These are chicken-sized birds from tropical American grassland and forest. They are the only close ostrich relatives that can take to the air, but they are weak flyers. Cassowaries, this part. These, these birds to me look like dinosaurs still. <laughs> Cassowaries. The largest flightless birds from dense rainforest are found in tropical New Guinea and northeastern Australia. They have blue skin on their head and neck. It's weird. The emu. Most closely related to the cassowaries, the emu lives on open grassland and deserts of Australia. Like the ostrich, it is adapted to dry conditions. And, did you know this? Kiwis are related to ostriches. Here in New Zealand. From the forests of New Zealand, the five species of kiwi are the smallest ostrich relatives and have long bills to probe the ground for prey. How interesting. I really like this book, not just for the cool maps, but literally on every page I learn something totally brand new. Look at these gorgeous, gorgeous flamingos. Little supermodel legs here. Let's read the box. Changing color. Each year, thousands of Caribbean flamingos are born in one of the world's largest flamingo colonies, Mexico's Ria Lagartos Biosphere Reserve. The chicks' gray feathers turn pink when they eat shrimp and other invertebrates containing a dye. This bird's population is rising from the Caribbean to South America. The flamingos are one of those creatures that the more I look at them, the more, like, bizarre they are, like, huge necks. These long legs. They're so weird. But the chicks are cute. So fuzzy. Our next bird is my favorite bird. Well, I love penguins in general, but we're gonna look at emperor penguins. The biggest penguin. I think my favorite are the um, blue fairy penguins, which are over here. Yes, we'll read that too. And the Adelie penguins, too. Are they on here? Oh, they are. Like... <laughs> okay, anyway. Emperor penguins. The life of the world's biggest penguin is a story of surviving extremes. It is one of the very few animals to live and breed on the Antarctic continent, the coldest place on Earth. Emperor penguins raise their chicks in the dark, bitter Antarctic winter when the temperature can drop to negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 60 degrees Celsius. Let's start with the little box. Look at all these guys. Keeping warm. Thousands of males huddle together to stay warm in the harsh Antarctic winter. Each is incubating a single egg under his belly, on top of his feet. The males stay on the ice with their egg all winter until the females return. 
such an interesting life the emperor penguins lead. Standing tall. Penguins stand very upright because their feet are set far back on the body. The emperor is the tallest of all, up to four and a half feet. Four and a half or four and a quarter? Four and a quarter feet. We're 1.3 meters. Polar penguin. Emperor penguins feed in the icy waters of the southern ocean around Antarctica. They can dive deeper than any other seabird to catch fish and krill. Each year, emperors gather in their thousands and breeding sites around the coast to mate and raise their single chicks. Now look at that range all around Antarctica. And all their breeding sites are dotted on there. I think it mentions that somewhere on this map, but let's read this. Feeding time. Males feed their chick with a special curd produced from their food pipe until the mother arrives with fish and krill caught at sea. Sleek swimmer. The streamlined body of a penguin is superbly adapted for swimming. Underwater, these birds flap their paddle-like wings for propulsion. Contact call. The call of an emperor penguin can be heard more than half a mile or a whole kilometer away. Each bird recognizes the call of its mate, which helps them locate one another in the crowded colony. Fluffy chicks. Emperor penguin chicks have downy gray feathers. They stay on the ice, dependent on their parents, until they molt into their adult plumage and set off to sea to fish for themselves. Speedy sliders. Penguins waddle around slowly on land, but they have a way of speeding up, tobogganing over snow and ice on their bellies. And there's a breeding sign. At colonies around the coast, emperors gather to find a mate. The female lays a single egg, then returns to the sea, leaving the male to incubate the egg alone. And we have some facts up here. On Antarctic coasts, the winter winds can blow up to 200 miles per hour, or 320 kilometers per hour. And emperor penguins are under threat from climate change as rising temperatures melt. The winter uh, sea ice. Let's look at some other species of penguins, my favorite. Here's the Galapagos penguin, of course lives in the Galapagos Islands. All 18 species of penguin live in the southern hemisphere. The most northerly one lives on the Galapagos Islands at the equator, nesting in crevices in the volcanic rock. The jackass penguin lives just down here. The only African penguin nests and feeds mainly on and around offshore islands, but is also sometimes found on the coasts of Namibia and South Africa. The little penguin, the tiniest one, living around here and in New Zealand. This is the world's smallest penguin at only 16 inches or 40 centimeters tall. It lives on southern Australian, Tasmanian, and New Zealand coasts, nesting on the dunes. The macaroni penguin lives down here. Like most penguin species, the macaroni penguin lives on islands in the southern ocean between Antarctica and warmer waters further north. And the Adelie penguin living down here. It's so cute. I really like them because they're like, what, what, like if you close your eyes and picture a penguin, you see black, white, Flippers, little tail, little beak, and waddling around. That's basically what Adelie penguins are all like. The Adelie penguin is the only other penguin species restricted to Antarctica. Unlike the emperor, it breeds on ice-free shores during the summer months. Alright, next we have the snowy owl. Few predatory birds are found as far north as the snowy owl. Many other owl species live in cold northern forests, but only the snowy can survive on the treeless tundra, where the ground is frozen solid and covered in snow for much of the year. Let's see our boxes here. Blending in, do you see it? 
the snowy owl is the only owl with an all-white plumage. This helps disguise it against the snowy ground, especially during the Antarctic summer, when there is almost continuous daylight and the bird is breeding and hunts at all hours. Speaking of theories, hunting. The snowy owl has such good hearing it can detect the position of prey burrowing beneath a blanket of snow. It swallows small rodents whole, but will tear larger animals such as hares and rabbits to pieces first. Let's look at some snowy owl anatomy. Let's see, silent wings. As in other owls, the feathers in the wings of a snowy owl have comb-like fringes, which help muffle the sound as the wing flaps through the air. It says snowy owls have excellent eyesight, like all birds of prey. And the barred plumage. All snowy owls have small black bar-like markings. These are more extensive in the larger female, especially on the sides and back. Arctic owl. The snowy owl survives and even breeds within the Arctic Circle in Canada, Greenland, and Russia, where it hunts burrowing rodents, such as lemmings and voles. Only during the bitter dark Arctic winter does it move further south. So let's check it out. Let's head over to Alaska to see the snowy owls over here. Non-breeding range. The orange here, they're non Snowy owls breed in the northerly parts of their range and migrate further south during the winter. They will also sometimes move south at other times if food becomes scarce. A variable clutch. The number of eggs a snowy owl lays depends upon how much food is available. When there are plenty of prey animals to hunt, the owl may lay eight or more. Look at that cute owl. Grand nester. Unlike other owls, the snowy owl must nest on the ground in its open tundra habitat. It chooses an elevated site to give it a view of approaching danger. Over here to Europe, finding food. Snowy owls regularly move from place to place according to the supply of food. They stay in the same location only if prey is abundant. Cute. Winter habitat. In winter, migrating snowy owls reach the southernmost parts of their range, where they may hunt ducks and grebes in marshes or moorland, or even rely on carrion. Let's see, I think there's only one extra box here. It says a snowy owl's wingspan may be more than 5 feet, or 1.5 meters. It's so neat. If you want any cool facts about birds, just leave them in the comments are so cool. An osprey. And look, I didn't know this. Look how wide the osprey's range is. I always associated ospreys with North America. I thought they were like a coastal bird of prey, but they're in Africa, Asia, Australia. They're all over the place. Let's read more about ospreys. The osprey is a large fish-eating bird of prey. Around the world it lives and breeds near water. Wherever fish is plentiful, plunging dramatically from the sky with outstretched taloned feet to grab its swimming prey. There it is grabbing its swimming prey, catching a fish. Ospreys have long featherless legs to reach into the water and use their curved talons and spiny foot pads to grip a slippery fish and lift it out of the water. The outer toes twist around it twist around so the bird can firmly hold heavy prey with two talons on either side. Interesting. There's another box down here. Look at that big old nest. Waterside nests. Ospreys nest along the shores of lakes and rivers or by marshes, typically choosing an exposed tree in which to build a platform of sticks before laying a clutch of three eggs. The firstborn chicks are the strongest, Younger ones may be left to starve if food is scarce. Let's check out this big old bird. Sharp beak. Like all birds of prey, the osprey has a hooked beak to tear its prey. Nostrils on the osprey's beak have valves that close to stop water getting in when the bird dives for a catch. Did it pull 
poised to grab. The osprey's feet, which are tucked under its body during flight, swing forward before a strike, with claws outstretched, ready to grab a fish. Worldwide Raptor The osprey is one of the world's most wide-ranging birds. It lives almost everywhere there is water to fish, except for the cold polar regions and the remotest islands. Birds in the northern hemisphere migrate south for the winter, but ospreys around the equator tend to stay in the same place all year round. Let's see, feeding the chicks. Ospreys build their nests where they can be sure of a good supply of food for their young. In Northwest America, they take advantage of the annual Pacific salmon migration when the fish swim up rivers from the ocean to breed. Long distance gliding. Like other large birds of prey, ospreys often rely on rising currents of warm air called thermals to carry them as they soar long distances, sometimes even over the open sea. Let's head over to Africa. Winter visitors. Across sub Saharan Africa, ospreys are winter visitors, traveling from Europe at the end of the northern summer. Only in Egypt and other parts of northeastern Africa are they resident all year. Let's see up here. Passing through, it says. In the northern parts of their range, ospreys are seasonal visitors, sur arriving to hunt and breed in spring and summer before migrating south to avoid the bitter winters. My sleepy eyes have trouble reading that far up. Anyway year-round residents down here. In warmer parts of the world, such as southern Asia, some populations of osprey are resident throughout the year and do not migrate. Very practical. Breeding pair. Ospreys start breeding at around three years old. Typically, a male mates with a single female, but if he can defend two nests, he might have a second partner. What a player. The ospreys in Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and Australia are slightly smaller than those in the rest of the world. Some scientists think that they belong to a different species. An osprey can carry prey weighing around two pounds or one kilogram, half its own body weight. And an osprey's wingspan may be up to six feet or two meters wide. And one more fact. Ospreys migrating from Africa to Europe in summer travel up to 5,000 miles or 8,000 kilometers. Let's see how. Oh, cool. A big old picture. Look at these guys. A committee of vultures, it says. From the rocky peak in the eastern Rodopi Mountains, Bulgaria. A group of griffin vultures survey their surroundings for food. These large birds of prey are scavengers. They feed on carrion or dead animals. Using their huge wings, they soar on thermal air currents while scanning the ground for fresh carcasses. Very cool looking birds, in my opinion. Oh, the blue and yellow macaw. I love parrots. I mean, I like birds in general. This spectacular bird is one of the biggest of the world's 405 parrot species. The blue and yellow macaw flies in noisy flocks over the canopy of the world's largest forest, the Amazon, which covers much of northern South America. Tools for dining. Like all parrots, the blue and yellow macaw is equipped to pick up and crack open hard-shelled nuts. It uses its clawed feet and a very powerful but sensitive beak to grasp and break open nuts. Sometimes one macaw may try to steal the seat from another. Very silly birds. Look at these. Not gonna lie, I think I like scarlet macaws more than blue and yellow macaws, but what else? Salt is scarce in the rainy Amazon rainforest. So macaws and other animals are attracted to exposed mineral-rich mud banks. Here they nibble the clay, which supplies much of the salt and other nutrients that keep them healthy. 
Macaws and other parrots are among the few kinds of birds to participate in this unusual feeding behavior. They crave that mineral. Let's look at its anatomy here. The long tail as well as their large size, reaching up to 34 inches or 86 centimeters in length, macaws are also distinguished from other parrots by their long tapering tail and their very colorful plumage. Like other species of macaw, this parrot has bright colors, blue above and yellow below, but it is surprisingly difficult to spot it when foraging high in the forest canopy. The Amazonian parrot blue and yellow macaw is found throughout the Amazon forest. Here, tall trees provide fruit and nuts for feeding, while the trunks of dead palms offer comfortable holes to nest. This parrot is still common throughout much of the region, but it is becoming threatened by deforestation and the pet trade. Let's see, let's see. Highlands appear. Over much of its range, the blue and yellow macaw is a bird of the Amazon lowlands, but in the Andean foothills of Peru, it lives in forests at an altitude of 4,920 feet, or 1,500 meters. The Flooded Forests In the central Amazon, the blue and yellow macaw lives in a type of forest called Varze. My goodness terrible at Portuguese. This region gets flooded during the rainy season, but the birds can stay feeding in the canopy high above the rising waters. Over here are the dry forests. In some parts of its range, the blue and yellow macaw lives in woodlands very different from the wet rainforest. Here the trees are deciduous and lose their leaves during dry season. And down here in the savannah region, in the driest seasons, macaws in the southern part of their range wander further into open country in search of food, taking them over tropical grassland as far south as Paraguay and Argentina. Let's see some macaw facts. Blue and yellow macaws are not endangered, but their numbers are declining due to shrinking habitat. And macaws are highly prized as pets, leading poachers to target these birds and sell them illegally. It's really important if you're ever purchasing a large bird to check where exactly that bird is coming from and how it was bred and everything. Alright, and I believe this is our last bird of the night. It is. It's the barn swallow. Another one of my favorite birds because um, they live in my area and... They nest around this time of year, and they're so cool to watch them fly around. They're super fast. They're like little jet planes. More than half of all bird species are small perching birds, or passerines. Many are expert at hunting insects on the wing. Barn swallows nest and raise their young in the northern summers when the skies are buzzing with life. But they must migrate to the warmer tropics before winter comes and insect numbers fall excited yesterday I noticed a swallow on the fence outside my window like leaning to the side and I was like is it gonna build a nest but it was just collecting stuff and it flew off and I was like darn would have loved to have a little swallow nest right outside my window oh well nesting there's their weird little nests many barn swallows attach their mud nests to the walls of buildings such as houses or barns hence their name they often line their nests with grasses or feathers, the whole construction taking about 10 days to complete. And hunting for flies. Barn swallows use their long pointed wings to maneuver themselves in flight. Flying up to 25 miles per hour, 40 kilometers per hour, these acrobatic birds can turn quickly to snap up insects with a wide open beak. Let's see, oh up here. A wide bill. The bill is short and flat, but can open wide to scoop up insects in flight, or collect mud to make nests. Crossing the globe. Barn swallows are found across much of the world, and each year most cross the equator in their migrations between North and South America or the wildest stretches of Asia. 
swallows from Europe even travel across Africa's Sahara Desert to reach their wintering grounds. Let's check it out. See, I told you they're in my area. It's the time of year that they're here. I love it when they're here. North America. Barn swallows in North America breed from May to August. The swallows here, like those in far eastern Siberia, have reddish brown rather than pure white underparts. They go up through here. Right here, Caribbean Passage. Swallows migrating south from North America either island hop through the Caribbean or follow the path of land through Central America. They also go this way through the islands, down here, and then back up. South America. Barn swallows arriving in South America reach Colombia and the Guianas by late August, and Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina by September out this one flying from here all the way down here to all the way back up Africa barn swallows overwinter across vast regions of Africa birds arriving from and those no birds arriving from Western Europe tend to head to the west and those from Eastern Europe to the east the longest distance traveled between Europe and Asia is an incredible 7,245 miles, or 11,660 kilometers. That's a really long road trip. Let's check out in Europe. Throughout summer, barn swallows breed across Europe and as far south as northern Africa. Most of those from northern and central Europe start their migration south in September or October. In Western Asia. To the east, the barn swallows range extends across Central Asia and Russia. Most of these birds will overwinter in Southern Asia. Just hop down here. To India. Most barn swallows seen in India are winter visitors only, but further north of this country and in a few other warmer parts of the world, they may be resident all year. Check it out. Also, flying over the Himalayas to get to India. That's amazing. I skipped an anatomy thing. Whoopsie, the forked tail. For controlled flight, the long tail spreads wide to help the barn swallow slow down. Let's check out in Eastern Asia. Look at this path. In this part of the world, swallows breed from the Himalayas to Japan. The birds here have creamy white underparts, but those in far eastern Siberia have reddish underparts like those in the Americas. And down here to Australia. Barn swallows breeding in eastern Asia typically overwinter in southeast Asia, but during the 20th century started migrating further into Australia. Interesting. Let's see. The little fact down here says these expert navigators can cover more than 200 miles or 320 kilometers in a single day. That's so incredible. So that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Next, we're going to cover the mammals. And this chapter is huge. That's going to be like a two hour video. So get ready for that sometime next week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.